The function of the interosseate and numbrical muscles of the hand are often poorly understood. The interosseate muscles are divided into four dorsal interosseate muscles and three or four palmar interosseate muscles. As the name suggests, the dorsal interosseate are situated closer to the dorsal side of the hand. Each of these muscles arise from adjacent sides of two metacarpal bones and insert at the bases of the proximal phalanges. There they insert into the dorsal digital expansions of the extensor digitorum covering the dorsal surfaces of the fingers. The function of these muscles are to abduct the second and fourth digit away from the middle finger, while the middle finger is held in place by the second and third interossia on either side. The thumb and the little finger are abducted by other muscles such as the abductor digiti minimi and the abductor pollicis brevis. On the palmar side, there are three or four interossia muscles which are smaller in size than the dorsal interossia. These muscles lie on the palmar surfaces of the metacarpal bones rather than in between them, and the middle finger has no palmar interosseous muscle. The other palmar interossia lie on the side of the digit that faces the middle finger. These muscles also insert at the dorsal digital expansions. The main function of the palmar interossia are to act to adduct the fingers towards the middle finger. There is also an additional action played by both the dorsal and palmar interossia that is related to the lumbricals. There are four lumbricals that lie on the palmar surface. They originate from the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus and pass to the radio side of their corresponding fingers to attach to the lateral margin of the dorsal digital expansions. Note that the interossia muscles mentioned earlier also insert at the dorsal digital expansions. Collectively, the lumbricals and the interossia act to pull the dorsal digital expansions, leading to the extension of the proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal interphalangeal joints. The lumbricals also have a second mechanism that lead to this extension of the distal finger joints, which is at the site of their origin on the flexor digitorum profundus. At this mobile site of origin, the contraction of the lumbricals pull the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus more distally. This reduces tension of the flexor tendons, further aiding the extension of the distal joints. Finally, the interossier muscles which insert at the base of the proximal phalanges lead to the flexion of the MCP joints, and this action is also supported by the lumbricals. So, in summary, the lumbricals do not act on their own. They support the interossier muscles in producing the flexion of the metacarpal phalangeal joints as well as the extension of the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints.